I'm gonna read Geronimo Stilton Oh, because of a cup of coffee. Let's begin. All because of a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee? What's a cup of coffee got to do with it? Everything, but let me explain. See, that morning, I was having breakfast at the Tail Trap Dinner. Diner. They have the best hot cheese buns. But stay away from the Spanish omelet. It's so spicy. It will curl your whiskers. Anyway, I was happily munching away when some mouse spilled coffee on me. My jacket was soaked. I was fuming. I whirled around ready to squeak. Instead, my jaw hit the ground. A female mouse stood in front of me. No, she wasn't just any mouse. She was the most beautiful mouse in the world. She stared at her empty cup. Then she stared at my jacket. So sorry, she whispered in a sweet voice. I tried to speak, but it felt like my tongue was tied in a knot. What do you say to such a stunning rodent? She was so charming. She was so... Sophisticated. She could have been on the over of Lammer Mouse. Um, my Stilton is name. I mean, my Geronimo is Stilton. I mean, my name is Geronimo Stilton, I stammered. I tried to shake her paw, but, but I slipped on the spill coffee. I crashed into the table of red having breakfast. I landed snout down in a plate of waffles and whipped cream. Do you mind, sniffed the rat. This is a business breakfast. I staggered off, but I couldn't see. I had whipped cream in my eyes. I bumped into another table. This time, two bottles of tap Tapsco sauce got stuck in my nostrils. Cheese nibblets! I cried, stumbling away. Next thing I knew, my tail was stuck in the fan. Ow! I shrieked. Then I hit a wall, a big furry wall. Watch it, furry! The wall ground. Uh oh, that wasn't a wall. It was Bert Bruiser Mouse. He was the biggest and meanest rodent on the mouse island. I tried to run, but I was frozen with fear. Suddenly, birds lifted me up and tossed me out of the door. I landed on the trolley tracks. I tried to get up, but my tail was stuck in the rails. Just then, I heard a trail whistle. Cut rotten rat teeth. A trolley was headed right for me. Help! I squeaked at the top of my lungs. The owner of the... Forever Green Garden Center ran toward me. Don't panic, Mr. Stilton, he shouted. I'll save you. I'll just chop your tail off with my hatch clippers. She waved the sharp scissors in the air. Chop, chop. Pass off my tail, I shrieked. I'd rather be run over by a trolley. And that's exactly what happened. The Rodin's Gazette. Luckily, I survived. So did my tail. After the trolley hit, I yanked my tail from the rails. Then I stumbled to my paws. I had a huge grin on my face. It felt so happy, so carefree, so alive. Oh yes, I was happy to be alive. And I was happy for another reason too. I had fallen in love. Getting knocked in the head by that trolley had made me realize something. The beautiful mouse in the diner was the one for me. I just knew she was my soul mouse. Now, all I had to do was tell her. I reached my office in a daze. Oops, I forgot to tell you. I run a new daily newspaper. It called the Rodin's Gazette. As soon as I walked into the ed editorial room, my sister Thea attacked me. Geronimo! Where have you been? She shrieked. The meeting what has already started. I just grinned from ear to ear. Meeting? What meeting? I murmured absentmindedly. My sister stared at me. What's with the bottles in your nose? And what happened to your jacket? You look you you look like you just got run over by the trolley, she declared. I smiled. Yes, it was a trolley. It ran right over me, I giggled. I was still dreaming about the mouse from the diner. Such a gorgeous fur, I mumbled, and the smile could light me, light up the darkest mouse hole. My sister stepped her paw, then she grabbed me by the whiskers. Hello in there! Is anybody home? She shouted in my ear. 
What are you talking about? You were not making any sense. Did you drink too much coffee this morning? I blinked. That's right. Coffee. I thought. That's how it all began. With a cup of coffee, a slow grin spread over my face. Just thinking about the mouse you love can't make you do that. Meanwhile, Fia was staring at me like I was some kind of fraud and science experiment. Suddenly, she groaned. Did you fall in love? She squeaked. Is that why you're acting so strange? I sighed happily. Love, isn't it wonderful? I mean, then I pulled a wad of bills out of my pocket. I began counting them as if there were petals on the floor. Flower. She loved me, she loved me not. She loved me, she loved me not. I sang, they rolled her eyes in disgust. You would better get your act together, big brother, she advised. I, in case you've forgotten, you are the publisher of a newspaper. There's tons of work to be done. I curled my tail, lost in thought. Work, I thought dreamily. I wonder that what kind of work the most beautiful mouse in the world does. She looked so smart, so polished. Maybe she was the head of her own adventuring agency. Or perhaps she was an international supermodel. I was so busy thinking about my soul mouse that I barely heard the knock on my door. I, I mean L-O-V-E. My secretary, Mouse Ella McMaster, came rushing in. She was pushing an enormous dictionary on the wheels. Mr. Stilton, we got to call the printer. I just found five misspelled words in tomorrow edition. She squeaked and nodded at Mouse Ella. Yes, call the printer. Call the radio station. Call every mouse in the city. I announced gleefully. I want everyone to know I'm in L-O-V-E. Masala gave me a strange look. Then she took a dictionary and scurried out of the office. Crazy lapsing mouse, I heard her mumbling, mumble before she left. Just then I heard the music blasting in the hallway. I left my desk to see what was going on. It looked like a wild mouse party. Mice were laughing and hanging out, out at the water cooler. Two mice danced by me doing a tango. Another mouse was making paper airplanes. No one was doing any work. Normally, I would be upset. I would tell everyone to get back to their desk. But I today, I didn't care. I was too happy. I was too excited. I was lo- in love with a capital L. The Vila shook her head. When the boss is away, the mice will be L-A-Y. She snorted. Two minutes later, an elegant female mouse tapped me on the shoulder. She was dressed in a very expensive looking cat fur jacket and matching skirt. Who are you? What do you want? I mumbled distractly. I was busy doodling tiny hearts in my notebook. Who am I? Don't you recognize me? I'm Creamy O. Cheddar, your editor-in-chief. I've been working for you for the past 20 years, she squeaked, sounding annoyed. I'll look up at her. Ah, yes, you do sort of familiar. I nodded. Gla- I glanced at her outfit. She wears expensive clothes, too. I murmured, lost in thought. I thought she looked very mouse and kaffir. By now, the whole office was staring at me. I heard them whispering among themselves. Buzz, buzz. He lost it, someone mumbled. Talk about that dizzy love. Someone else commented. Suddenly... I noticed a picture on the front page front page of the paper. That's her! That's her! I shouted. I was so excited I could hardly breathe. I read the caption under the picture. The young Countess Afni Boone Sugarfer, daughter of the renowned Count, Count Chester Cheese Nip, arrived in town yesterday. The Countess, who is staying at the Grand Shatter Hotel, will be the guest at the Embassy Hall this coming Saturday. I drew hearts around the picture. I was grinning from ear to ear. Stephanie! Ah, Stephanie! I murmured. My sister shook her head. Geronimo, you're hopeless, she smirked. Absolutely hopeless. Five dozen red roses. I left work and ran to the florist. I had to order flowers for Stephanie. Lots of flowers, and not just any flowers. Oh no, a mouse as breathtaking as the Countess deserved only the best. I, 
I've settled on five dozen long stemmed red roses. The roses were perfect. Now I just had to write something on the card. Mousy regard. I tried. No, maybe something more personal. I tore up the card. Hug and kisses. I wrote next. No, that wasn't right either. Prudently yours. I scribbled. Hmm, that seems a little, little too familiar. Formal. I stared into the space. Then I noticed the florist staring back at me. Well, he wasn't just staring; he was shooting me dirty looks. Have you finished yet? You are using up all my out of my cards. He squeaked. Why didn't you just write your name? My, my name? I asked in that. Yes, your signature. Take it. You know, you'd know your own name. He burst out impatiently. Then he closed his eyes. <sighs> I need a vacation," he mumbled. "These lovesick mice are such nitwits. Normally, I would mind if someone mouse called me a nitwit, but today I couldn't care less. So, what if I was acting like a nitwit? Stephanie von Schuckerberg was worth it. Full ex is nine minutes. I signed the card. Then I stuck it under the silk bow, tying up the gigantic bunch of red roses. Cheese flavored chocolates. I spent the whole evening waiting for the phone to ring. I was hoping the countess would call to thank me for the flowers, but the only thing that rang was my toaster oven's timer. I was so surprised. Why didn't she call me? Every now and then, I lifted the receiver to make sure the phone was working. The next day, I raced the candy store to buy some cheesy chews. Have you ever had cheesy chew? They're the best cheese flavored chocolates in all of New Mall City. I decided on a ten pounds super deluxe box, and I as I was paying, my cousin trapped strode into the door. Yes, he was a mouse too, but you can never call him quiet. In fact, he is one of the loudest rodents I know. It's amazing we're related. Now he stuck a paw in my new box of chocolates. Who are these for? He said, swallowing a Swiss caramel chocolate in one gulp. No! I yelled. They're not for you. But it was too late. He had already scarfed down half the box. Tears sprang to my eyes. My precious gift was frightened. I couldn't send the countess a half-eaten box of chocolate. Even if they were expensive cheesy chews, how could you? I scolded Trap. That was a present. My cousin barely blinked. No problem, my old cousin Kins. He squeaked. It's my birthday next month. I'll just pretend this is a little gift from you to me. I thought. Would you please give me another sealed box? I asked the sealed mouse. Trap shook my paw. Thanks, Jerry Berry. He giggled, tossing more chocolates into his mouth. By the way, Fia tells me you've got a new sweetheart. Want some advice? I rolled my eyes. The last mouth I take advice from is my cousin. Listen to me, cousin Kins. Trad advice. Lady might like a challenge. You've got to play it cool. Don't let her know you're interested. A lace handkerchief. Once again, I spent the night waiting for the telephone to ring, but the beautiful countess did not call. Then I had a horrible thought: What if she was allergic to roses? What if chocolate made her fur itch? My heart sank. I had to do something. I decided to go to her hotel. I was too embarrassed to wait in the lobby, so I hid behind the bushes. Suddenly, someone laid a paw on my shoulder. "Holy cheese!" I shrieked, but it was. Only my favorite nephew Benjamin, Uncle Geronimo. What are you doing here? He squeaked. Right then, I saw her come out. Shh, little mousy, I'm a murdered Benjamin. I stood up, trying to look casual. The countess seemed to look right through me. Then she dropped something. It was a small lace handkerchief. I ran to pick it up. Excuse me, I'm the mouse from the diner. I mean, mouse from the diner. I stammered. I'm the one who sent you the red noses. I mean, roses. The one who sent you a candy. I mean, candy. It's Gilton, Geronimo Gilton. I know I was making no sense, but I couldn't believe I was speaking with her again. After tell all. 
Who knew she could be my one true love, my best friend forever? Yes, well, yes, she could be a future Mrs. Geronimo Stilton. The Countess opened her eyes wide and gazed at me. Oh, she breathed. I gave her the parker shift. Then I tried to bow. Big mistake. I tripped the, and tumbled back into a road bush. Once I da- managed to stand up, Rose started sticking out of my nose. I staggered off into the road. That's when I heard the roar of engine. I looked up just in time to see a huge cream cre- cheese truck had it right for me. Help! I shrieked. The truck stopped within the inches of my snout. Seconds later, an expensive sport car screeched to a halt in front of the hotel. A polished looking mouse leaped out. He ran up to the countess and kissed her fur. My darling Stephanie, he groaned, they are all waiting for you at the ball. Then the two of them disappeared into the night. I told you to play cool. The following morning, I dragged myself to the office. I was so depressed. The countess wasn't interested in me. She already had Miss, Mr. Flash's sport car mouse. She probably laughed at my silly roses and threw my chocolate in the trash. Oh, how could I have been so foolish? I doodled a string of broken hearts in my notebook. Then I began to sob loudly. Thea marched into my office. She looked at my drawing and shook her head. She broke your ha- heart, didn't she? Thea demanded to know. If you ask me, you should have to play cool. I sobbed louder. A minute later, Trapp stuck his hat into the room. What's with the waterwork, Cousin Gins? He asked. Thea pointed to the pro- broken heart. Trapped rolled his eyes. I told you to play cool, he sneered. Just then, a small rodent scurried through the door. It was my ne- nephew, Benjamin. He stares at my heart in, the no- in my notebook. Uncle, maybe you should have play cool. He squeaked. I moaned. Just thinking about the contest made me choke. How could I re- live without my soul mouse? My inspiration. My heart... I put my snout between my paws and cried like a rat duck in a glue trap on the Christmas Eve. A valley of the cheese sets. That night, I slunk home. I dropped into my power chair in front of the television. I usually don't watch a lot, a lot of TV, but I was feeling too sad to do anything else. I sat on the box of tissue out next to me. I knew I would need them. Just couldn't stop crying. It was like a, I had sprung the lurk. Oh, why did I have to fall in love with the mouse? Lost in my own thoughts, I barely heard the doorbell ring. Who, who's it? I mumbled. Why wasn't I allowed to suffer in peace? Whoever it was, I didn't give up. I shuffled toward the door and opened it. Hey there, bro- hey there big brother. Squeaked Thea. Trap and Benjamin were by her side. I'm really not up for company. I sighed. I sat with a sigh. I tried to close the door, but my cousin pushed his way inside. Listen, Cousin Giz, we're here to cheer you up, he declared, grinning. After all, that is what relatives are for, isn't it? He marched over to my mega-huge fridge. Got any cheddar balls? He asked the old tummy rumbling. I jumped to my paws. My cousin had an endless appetite. He would eat me out of house and hole if hole if I didn't stop him. Luckily, Thea beat me to it. No time for food, she told Trap, yanking him away by the tail. We're here to cheer up Geronimo. He looked like he's been eaten by a cat. She stuck in a magazine magazine under her my snout. Read this, she interrupted. Word 8 Wonder Still a Mystery, a headline de- declared. The article said an ancient report had found, been found in New Mall City's library. The report was written by the famous explorer Richard Reddingbone. Reddingbone had journeyed to Butterfly Island in 
in search of the legendary Valley of the Jesus. The valley is said to be an eighth wonder of the world. Unfortunately, Reddingbone was not able to find it. Years later, explorers continued to search for the valley's secret entrance. I dropped the paper, shuffling back to my pot chair, and sat down. So why are you showing me this? I asked wearily. My cousin's script spread from ear to ear. Don't you get it, Jamaster? Jamaster? He squeaked. We'll go in. We'll go in search for this cheesy valley place. Then we'll become rich and famous. I rolled my eyes. First of all, first of all, trap is the valley of the cheese at. I said. And second of all, I'm just not up for the trip right now. I wouldn't be any funny at all. I sighed heavily. Then I stared blankly at the television screen. On it, two mice were holding paws and skipping off into the sunset. The female mouse looking just like the countess. I started crying like a sprinkler on high speed. My family took a hint. Disappointed, they let themselves out. Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel. Bye. Bye bye. And happy new year.